Hello happy stampers this is Kate with Kate's Paper Creations and I welcome you to my weekly Casing the Catalog video and blog and um, today I am going to be casing a card from the Pretty Pumpkins bundle and this card right here is the card I'm going to case I know for a fact that I did not do it exactly as they did but I think you'll like the version that I made anyway. So let's get started. This is my design and let's get you started so you can see how I made it. So the base is Blackberry Bliss five and a half by four and a quarter scored at five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. That's the base card. Then I have two pieces of shimmer, the shimmer white, and it's hard to see in the video, I'm sure, but it's got the shimmer paper that's in the general catalog. It has a nice little um, sparkle to it. I cut two pieces, one for the front and one for the inside, and the one for the inside I have already stamped. This is the Pretty Pumpkin stamp set, and this is the stamp I used on the inside of the card. We're going to be using this stamp and a die to cut it out, and this we will stamp and die cut out as well. And so there's the dies as well. Okay, my sentiment today that I'm going to be using comes from Dragonfly Garden. May good things grow all year long is the sentiment I'm going to be using. Okay, so we can go ahead and put this on the inside and just be done with it and get it out of the way. Let's do that. And I didn't have to make the inside shimmer, but the basic white is a different kind of white and I didn't want to mix the two different colors or shades of white. So I stayed with the shimmer on the inside and it's just lovely too when you open it up and you get that shimmer. I'm going to set that base part aside because this is the piece we're going to work with first. And um, I don't know if I told you this before, but sometimes when you're cutting with your trimmer, you get this little lit ridge on your cardstock. And if you just take your bone folder and just lightly go over it, it will make it go away. So just something you might need to know. Now I'm going to be using for colors, I'm using crushed curry, pumpkin pie, garden green, and blackberry bliss. The piece here is old olive cardstock and it's stamped old olive ink. So that's that. This is the chevron weave ribbon and it's evening evergreen. I'm going to be using a different ribbon on our card. And then this is the vellum and it's three inches by three inches. This piece is the four by five and a quarter. So it will leave this lovely border all the way around. And I am using blending brushes. Now today you're gonna to see me using multicolored handles, blending brushes. They are not Stampin' Up. Before Stampin' Up made them available in their catalog, I had already purchased these and was using them. And I needed them to be similar and all of that today. I do have the, the um, Stampin' Up! blending brushes and they are awesome and I do use them most of the time but for today that's just a little explanation for you. This um, pumpkin that we're going to put on the front of the card here is stamped with basic white. In this catalog you have to buy it um, the refill and a blank pad and create your own you don't sell it as a set anymore, but that's what this is. And it takes a little while to dry. And so I stamped it and waited overnight for it to dry. I also mounted it on a foam sheet. And so I um, took a piece of two and a half by two and a half pile papaya, and I put the foam sheet on the back. It's sticky on both sides. And then I stamped, well, I stamped it first. Then I stuck this behind and then I let it dry and then I cut it out with the die. So it cut out the entire piece with the 
foam backing. And that just automatically raises that piece up. Okay, so now getting to this. I think that in the catalog, the thing they did there, I think was done with watercolors, um, some kind of watercoloring. I, I really didn't know and I really couldn't figure it out. And so I just played with it with my um, brushes and I felt like I had imitated it close enough to make it work. And you'll have to tell me what you think, but that's what I did. And um, no two are ever going to be alike because there's just no way to imitate. Okay, so I'll put my brushes up here so I don't get my colors mixed up. And I'm going to put my original here so I can kind of see it and imitate it. Whenever I'm doing a project with brushing and, and colors, I try to always start with the lightest color and then graduate down to the darkest color. So that's what I'm going to do today. And I'm just going to, and I always stamp off a little bit before I start, and then I always start moving before I go onto the card. It's just how I do it. Um, I'm not really worried about being perfectionistic here. I'm just gonna, and I don't really, that looks good. Let's leave that for now. Let's come back to the pumpkin pie. That's gonna be next. And we need some orange up in here. And I think, well, I might come back and do some more. We'll see. Then I'm going to do the green. And I kind of come up in through here with the green. Let's get a little bit more and just and fade it out to this side a little bit. And what's nice is when you've got the lighter color first, you can cover up. So I'm just trying to kind of bring in this purple because it just kind of sets everything off a little bit. I'm kind of liking that. And like I say, it's not ever going to be the same way twice. Mm, what do we want to do? Does it need something? I don't know that it does. I think it's going to be fine. Now that that's done, I'm going to close these up. And um, you could, I'm going to be stamping the um, leaf image in the that's there. Um, you could do it beforehand with stays on, and it wouldn't, um, because with the stays on, it would dry permanent, and you wouldn't have to worry about smearing when you were running your brushes over it. And it's waterproof when it dries, so then you don't have to worry about um, it smearing. But because, get my stamp out, I need my stamp. Um, but because I'm inking first, I don't have to worry about that. So let me get my stamp. This is the one I'm gonna use. And get my block. And I will still go ahead, stays on is what I have out, so that's what I'm gonna use. And again, this is just totally random. It's not, you can decide where you want it to be. I think my um, pad needs to be re-inked, so I'm really pounding hard on it today. There's two. I think I'm going to do one kind of like this. And that's all I'm going to do on that part. Okay, now I'm going to do some um, splattering with a water brush. So I have my water brush and I have water in it already. And let's see, I think I'll splatter with the Blackberry Bliss. Um, I tried splattering with the other colors. They came out kind of dark looking anyway. So I'm just going to stick with that. And I just get ink on a block. So we'll get some ink on the block, probably way more than I need. 
but we'll do that. And then um, I'm going to do this off camera because when you splatter, the splatter goes everywhere. So, I mean, you can't, I, I get done and I've got splatters, you know, clear over everywhere. So I'm going to put this in my um, <laughs> garbage can over here and use it to capture the, um, the splatters so I don't get them all over my work surface here. I'm going to add some water to that too to juice up that ink. And then I'm going to use this water brush. And when I squeeze it, some water is going to come down into that and make it really juicy so that I get lots of good splatter. And then I just take and tap it on my finger over my piece until I have as much splatter as I want. And so that's what I'm doing. And I like that. So like I say, probably more than I needed, but that's okay. More um, ink on this ink pad than I needed. But I'll just get out one of my baby wipes and clean that up so I can put that away. So there's the basic card front. Yeah, I think it's absolutely lovely. Okay, so now I will turn it over and where's my stamp and seal? And I am going to attach it to the card front flat. Just like that. Okay, now the vellum is just our plain white vellum or clear vellum and it is three by three inches and on this particular card I attached it with just a single strip of tear and tape but as I was playing around with this idea some more and I realized I was going to be putting this ribbon down I decided to to do it that way and I'm still not real sure I like it um, but you can tell me what you think because I am going to just run a strip right across the middle here where approximately where I'm going to place the ribbon and so then it will show but it's going to get covered up so I'm going to do that and then I didn't have the ribbon that they had in the original version so I'm going to be using some of this and this is from the in color um, shimmer ribbon I forget what it's called let me look it up real quick so I get the right name ribbons are on page 139 let's see here it is open weave ribbon and it's in in all of the new in colors that are in for this year so um, this is the pale papaya open weave ribbon and here again I'm going to just put some sticky down here and I'm going to put my ribbon on next and I'm just sticking it right in the middle because it's going to get covered up okay so there's so again I'm just doing that and then here's the pumpkin that I put the foam um, backing on. Peel that off. Oh, we probably should, well, I think I can do it afterwards. I need to put the sentiment on, but that's okay. And then you can put the pumpkin on there. And that design in the white may be hard to see, but it, it really is pretty. It's very easy to do and it's lovely to see. I'm gonna use Blackberry Bliss to stamp the sentiment hmm. there we go okay and because that has a good uniform backing I'm pretty sure I can stamp it without any issues and it did excellent okay so there's that piece and then here's this little one and I'm going to put it on with dimensionals. Put one there and I'll put one over here, which is plenty. 
and then we'll just kind of place it on there like that. Now I really like that. If you're interested in adding some um, some bling, I added some brushed metallic dots and um, the gilded gems would also look really nice on this, but I used the gold brushed metallic. Oh, that's not my picky tool. I need the picky tool. Um, and you can put them wherever you want. If it don't the if you don't like your vellum curling up, you could put a glue dot under like the corner here and put one of those over the top of it if you'd got a problem with that sitting up there. So we couldn't do that. And then I can just put a little piece right underneath it and it doesn't show because the, the lovely gilded gem. Now I wouldn't want to necessarily do all four corners, but that kind of gives it something to hold it in place. And that is today's Casing the Catalog card, where we cased page 48 of the mini catalog from Stampin' Up! Now I got carried away, I had so much fun, and I had to practice this background a little bit before I started making the cards. So then I had some um, practice pieces. So let me share with you another card I made with my practice piece. I had it, I just picked out smaller pieces that I had in the drawer, scrap stuff, so to speak. And so this initial piece is um, four by three. And of course, then the Blackberry Bliss is four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then this is a standard A2 card, except it's a side fold lengthwise. So it's um, four and a quarter by 11. And so then it makes this. The background here is that lovely time worn type embossing folder. I just love that folder. It's becoming one of my favorites. This is cut from Old Olive. It's one of the dies in there. And you've already seen me do the um, pumpkin and this part, and of course the background. And then this has the gilded gems, and they sparkle more than the brushed metallic, of course. A little less subtle, a little more sparkle. But isn't that lovely? So that was a lot of fun. Then I had one other thing I was going to show you. Oh yeah, here we go. So this one is um, soft succulent card base. And this is from the Harvest um, Designer Series paper, Harvest Med Metalody or Med Medley. And these are all stamps and dies that are in the um, Pretty Pumpkin bundle. Now, so the pumpkin, I did the same as the other two cards. This is just stamped and die cut out and colored with um, Old Olive Pale Papaya and Pumpkin Pie blends pins. And this one, I have to tell you what I did here. This was kind of fun. It was just experimenting to see. So what I did is I cut this out, this image out of a piece of, um, oh, cardstock or whatever. It's probably cardstock. I would do it originally. And I got to looking at it and I thought, oh, that would be so cool if I could make a stencil or something. So what I ended up doing was taking a piece of just rectangular, very vanilla cardstock and inking it with greens and oranges to make the background. Then I cut out the design, this design from very vanilla with um, double-sided adhesive on it. And I stuck it down over the inked piece of very vanilla and I um, cut it out. So, so I cut this piece out of just plain, very vanilla. Does that make sense? Yeah. I cut the design out of plain, very vanilla with adhesive on the back. Then I stuck it over the inking that I had done on another piece. And then I die cut it a second time. So I ended up with this piece, and I don't know if you can appreciate it in the video or not, but it looks like a puzzle because that very vanilla over the, it just, it ended up looking really cool. Anyway, it was fun to play with. I don't know if I'll do it again, but anyway, it was fun. And so I just put it up on this piece. 
So that's a little extra for today's video. I hope you enjoyed stopping by for my casing the catalog video. I hope you have been inspired to um, make something of your own. If you do, I'd love to see it. You can always share it with me and I could share it possibly on my blog or my channel. If you don't have a demonstrator or are not a demonstrator, I would love to have you shop with me through my online store. And the, um, the link to that is in the description box below, as well as a link to my blog, which I am trying to fix the subscribe button for. I'm in the process of doing that. So let me know what you think. And thanks for stopping by.